cool. So with the set we're going to be seeing today is going to be uh, not Fox versus Croker. They're starting off doing uh, Sheik and Falco. Um, not Fox has kind of a library of characters. I've seen him pull out. Oh man, I could be wrong about some of this, but so he's got a Sheik, he's got a Fox, he has a Captain Falcon, he has a Peach and a Puff. I think that's everybody I've seen him play. Um, Sheik's probably his strongest character is main. Uh, his Fox is also kind of strong too. Um, Croker on the other hand, Falco Puff player. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see Puff happen as well, but he's at least starting Falco. I'm not, I haven't played him for a little while, so I can't even say who I'd say is stronger. His, his Puff definitely used to be stronger, but he's been playing more Falco. And maybe that's because he likes Falco more, or maybe that's because his Falco got better, right? Couldn't say. Um, now Fox ends up taking kind of an early lead in this set. And we'll kind of see what he ends up doing with it. The thing about it is, like, we did, we watched a lot of Sheiks today, and a core problem we've been seeing is that they're just not holding onto those leads when they get them. Like, you need to intuit your opponent just a little bit more, even when you get that lead. Because, I don't know, you, you know what I mean? You get Gimp one time, and that stock being gone then, it's gone. You know, you don't get to, it doesn't matter where you're at. So even though you're at 141 right now, every bit you get here makes a difference. Now, you, being 90% ahead, that's something, but you can st still die, and you can get nothing else, right? That was a good double laser from ledge. Um, not Fox tried to cover it with like a forward tilt, which um, I think he just read that he's gonna try to go in a little further. Maybe he was like planning for a different move, different option. With Falco, you kind of have to be respectful like of his ledge options though, because lasers cover so many things that your other tools would cover, like simple getup options. Oh, fantastic! Just straight up run off there. Kroger looked like he was a little bit antsy to close it by going for that forward smash. Ended up finding kind of a cool uh, upbeat setup. That was almost like guaranteed by the time he blew his jump. Nothing he could really do. I don't even I don't know. I bet a really, really well timed air dodge could have gotten away with it. Okay. And Kroger's building a little bit of momentum here. Actually, one of the things I'm noticing a lot is Not Fox is getting these uppies right on the front of the stage and getting the first boof to hit Kroger. Um. Okay, he got one of those lasers to hit actually for the jab reset. Didn't didn't get capitalized off it though. I don't think he was expecting to get that. He just wanted the extra lasers, I think. Ooh, good fair. Now Fox is kinda scary over on the ledge. Like, he's got a little, little tricks, you know. Using his poof to get hit, that little fair got just a sneak at your feet. Good recovery. I don't know. I actually can't decide if I think he's like tricky. Or if Kroger's just making some big gambles, like some kind of call-outs, and he ends up putting himself in positions where at least it's a little dangerous to go for. It. Right. Actually, we end up at a stock to a stock here. That's not all that unsurprising. That's a, that's what I was thinking earlier. Is like we've been we have the theme of Sheiks like kind of dropping their leads, and there it is, just a down air trade for nothing. So Kroger's gonna take game one. Croker making the respectable decision where he pulls his character icon off so he can like consider who's gonna play. Because he knows, right? There's always a chance you want to change character once you hear about stage. So, oh, even even not Fox, he's doing the same thing. He's gonna switch to Marth. Croker is over here. I think um, not Fox was trying to be like respectful and said, oh, do you want to switch after he's Marth? He's like, he just respectfully said, I can't switch after you pick. That's very, very respectful. There's so many counterpick cheesers out there who will try to get away with that. Um, myself included, if I'm playing PM, because their counterpick rules are really weird. And I will take advantage of them. I'm way too honest in Melee. I just play Jigglypuff all the time. I don't try to like, cheese people out with weird character specific, specific counterpicks. But in PM, that's not the case at all. Okay. Set the camera up. Good reverse near. He can definitely turn this. He could have turned that into something. Even if he grabbed the ledge and like could use like an uppy or something to set up, hit him with the front of the platform. Wow. Croker really taking advantage of having Randall there. Nice. Not Fox really not like getting that far behind though. 60% is not that bad. Especially on like Yoshi where well, unless that happens. Still has his jump though. 
the thing is, you have to. It's a volatile stage for both these characters being on Yoshi's. So sometimes it's not a big deal. Sometimes it's a really big deal. Like something like that, right? It didn't really matter what percentage he was at. Um, low percentage games like that. They just, they're going to change the matchup. So keeping these leads now, like while you can try to enjoy and make your situations better for you. Or even close out another Gimp, you know? Oh, wow, that was good. Such patience. I'm looking for that back air. Patient. Like he waits to see what he can like what what move he wants to look to punish to start up those like pillar combos to start those like classic Kako combos. I also noticed from watching Croker and Duffles a lot, he um I don't know if it's like maybe he maybe he's doesn't have the tightest spacing, but when he was playing Puff and now I'm seeing a lot of Falco as well, he's willing to take those trades. I, I and if they're calculated, they're working out for him, so I'm not here to say they're bad calls. So for instance, like right there, had it had it hit. You just take it. You just you go for the downer, hit him, doesn't matter. Yeah, he's gonna get that, he's a little early. Oh my gosh, that's really unfortunate. I hate to see that. So in, everything's best five for this tournament, and everything's so weird and counter picky. So he's gonna go to Dreamland, and he's trying to see if he's gonna switch his character because I know Croker wants to play Jigglypuff. Oh, I knew it! What I say? I knew. Crownpuff. Okay, I didn't know. Which, I didn't know what Puff he played. I love. I love uh, seeing what Jigglypuff people want to play. I thought he was a red puff or a blue puff or something. I don't know. It's a new era. Crown Puff is so cool again. Nice. Good shield after it. Covered a lot. I wonder why you went for a forward there, throw there instead of a back throw. Like, at his percentage, you could have set some up, like... A, a back throw into like a reverse fair or like covering ledge threatening, threatening a lot of options maybe he was expecting like a bad DI off the throw or something oh wonderful roll up using uh, the over 100 percentage roll up to get something there not quite gonna kill Um, down smash, uh, really, really efficient with puff off the top. Actually, is more if you get if you get like the tipper sweet spots for it. Nice, get up there, just good shark. Okay, these these forward smashes are a little bit uh, randy from Kroker. So that um, that last jump we just saw, Marth really wants to save that when he's comboing Jigglypuff off stage because oh wow that's cool name. You really want to save that um, last jump there because you're trying to position to see where she's going to go next or where she's going to like be forced to go next. If you just commit to it early, she know she can just DI away and know that you can't follow it up with anything, and even allows her to like know that now she can get back to the ledge or somewhere on the stage for free because you don't have another tool to move around until you get the floor. And Marth isn't like Fox, where he's like, he doesn't just get to the, get to the floor super duper quick. Fox can kind of afford to like make that miss and just like fast fall, hit the floor, and like pick again, you know? Ooh, these are some kind of huge, like, full drift short hop back airs going through shield, like looking to poke him probably. Kroker goes for some like, kind of pretty randy um, 
Oh no, Gap Attack. He goes for some pretty Randy Forge matches. The thing is, when they work, they really work. So they feel really rewarding. Um, and I guess I can't be I can be honest and say Not Fox isn't really covering up that hard. Those huge, huge reward moves, they're like, could be high risk. But if they're not getting punished, they're like, they're pretty easy to throw out. Kind of an unfortunate ending there, just getting pineapple. Talking about changing, not Fox. Going back to Sheik, interesting. Crooker's so absorbed in the game, I actually love it. He's like talking to the, he doesn't remember the score of the match. He's like, is it 2 1 or what's going on? He's too caught up in his gameplay. I think you kind of have to be though because um, I think it's really easy to get thrown off if you have like the SD situation that happened in um, game two. We lost the match because of it. It's so easy to like have that happen. You say, no, I need to recontextualize my, like, my focus. I need to get back into the game. Down throwing a nair, interesting. If he if he gone for an up air or a fair there, I think you could have made made more happen. I understand not going for the fair because the platform's there. Ooh, I like the nair from ledge. Another nair from ledge, yeah, and another and a fair that time. Ooh, I would love to see some a little less middle there, even a forward tilt. Because if it doesn't work, whatever, do something else. Okay. Ooh. It doesn't look like not not Fox doesn't look like he's that that comfortable with the um, throw follow-ups for this matchup. He definitely seems, he knows them. He understands that down throws like what leads to it. But he's not maybe just not playing reactively enough to it. He's getting so much from his ledge situations though. Like him his acting from ledge is getting him a lot in this particular matchup. We get ledge here. I bet he's gonna get yeah more aerials from it. I don't know if he can make this one though. Yeah, not much you can do on that one. Kroker recognizing he needs to just keep ledge, which is a smart call. I love Kroker. Does something like huge gusto full drift backers. I like them. Like they're huge cross ups. Oh nice. Oh man, that could have been something. That could have been an early kill. The thing is, Sheik doesn't really have a lot of ways to get like really early kills on Puff. It's always off like the earliest you can get is like grab follow ups with like off bad DI or calling him out with a good fair. But Puff, Puff, she has like low profile rests, uh, up tilt rests, up air rests, a lot of like um, gims off stage, like stuff like that. Just a soft fair. I mean, not that it was like an early percent or anything. Okay. So. Sheik's best punish there is to definitely go for a down throw chase because you don't really get that much for a fully charged up smash and it's not going to kill until about 70%. Um, so choosing to opt for a down throw into whatever aerial you can get for it is just going to end up being more due to the combined percentage. Okay. Oh, that was fantastic. That was so fast. I want to see if Croker comes down here. Because now I think... He, he's kind of doing the same thing he did last game where he like realized he had to start changing what he was doing but it was a little bit too late until he was in trouble because the first two stocks went by so quickly and now Fox just gained huge momentum for it what? okay so they completely changed it up this time Croker back to Falco not Fox to Fox I like it I think they heard he heard FD and was like I, I'm no, 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 not doing that I, um, I've noticed, like, so within Portland culture, it's been a long time since I thought that people were, like, just counterpicking all the time. This is the, today might be an example where I've seen, like, a lot of changing of characters. Not in a bad way. Um, it's, like, a lot of people who, like, I know that they really have, like, multiple characters and they're trying to, like, like, Croker is a Falco Puff man. He's clearly a dual man. But I feel like that was so shunned upon, like, even a year ago, like, um, 
being a dual main, it was just either you're a dirty counterfaker or you're committing to your one character super, super hard. Melee, Melee's Melee game has just changed a little bit, I think. There's a lot of people who are like tactfully planning counterpicks. It's kind of like, I feel like it was kind of an old school Melee thing to do all these like weird counterpicks, but now it's like kind of coming back. Which is interesting because we're going to be like definitely a wave of like super serious Melee. Oh, that was beautiful. Good, good stuff from Joker. We're in a wave of super serious melee, so like people doing that it now like is justified in the way that it's not just you like trying to cheese people. It's just like your legit game plan. Everyone has a fox for puff, you know. No one wants to get stuck on that bad stage with their character that there isn't good there. You just can't afford to unless you're really really good at it. You can't afford to make that. You wanna you wanna get those W's. That was so beautiful. Ran up, baited the side B, way dash back. Knew he was gonna go for it. Um, Croker, if he had he shortens though, would have been genius. And he got into lead with a shortened side B. Oh, that was a good nair. Really, really counterplayed. That would have been bad. I hate seeing side BSDs, especially at zero. Like you see it at eighty percent or something, it's like ah, eh, whatever. But not a zero. You do not like that. Wow, he's using these wave dash backs, um, not foxes, in such beautiful places, actually. Croker's really trying to make something happen over one of these ledges. Close them out early. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna lose that stock. And we're gonna go to the last stock of this. I can't believe it. I hope it's not cheesy. I hope it goes down really honestly. Not really stupidly. Okay, Croker getting something started. This is, yeah, so that's not that hard of a recovery. It's a little risky. That's not going to close out a Falco. Oh, they're both loving. They're both just looking for dash tech. That's like three, three or four dash techs in a row. Okay, this is really hard for Falco. That was it. It was a down smash. Really well placed down smash, actually. That was a really, really good set. Really close. Um, if there's one thing, I'm not a big fan of this ladder format we're trying out today, because I think it, uh, I think it perpetuates having a strategy that's based around something other than just beating your opponents. There's like a little bit of a tact to how to play the ladder, right? Um, but it is really cool because now we get to see like some really, really good sets that we may not otherwise seen. Like I've never seen them play, and I'm really glad I did. It was a really good set. I think that this system does encourage a little bit more close sets, right? Because people don't just want to play really good players because it, it doesn't look good for them like when they get queued at those times, right? But it's also not good to just beat up people who are way worse than you because you want to look better by beating close set, having good close sets. Anyway, next set.